Welcome to That's Why Podcast with Anna and Patricia, the show where we arouse your curiosity while we dull your senses. Hello, Patricia. Good morning. Good morning, Anna. How you doing? I'm sore. Yesterday, my niece and I worked out and my legs are burning. I woke up and I'm walking a little bent over. Uh, okay, so <laughs> for a second, you scared me because of the topic of our conversation today <laughs> and, and our show. And I thought, oh, goodness, she's sore. What will she be sharing with us today? No. But I'm, I'm glad to hear that it was from a good workout. <laughs> oh, man, so sore. And then I was like, I'm going to eat healthy. I ended up eating three cupcakes yesterday and oh, a wow. pecan pie slice. Ooh. Then this morning, we got our COVID shot, our first one. Then after that, we mm-hmm. went to get a burrito. And I had a carne asada fries for breakfast. You know what, though? Your body needs it. Oh, my gosh. I'm so terrible because <laughs> I'm never like, why'd you do that now? You just undid what you did. But you know what? Maybe you just break even now oh, at this man. point, right? Like the calories you burned with... Um... Did you lift weights? Uh, we just did body weight. What about you? What did you do this weekend? I went to a Zumba class that I usually like to go to on Saturdays. And I hadn't been there for a while. And I had so much freaking fun. The mm-hmm. Class was packed. They had lifted the mandate, the mask mandate. I was celebrating a lot of different things. So I was I was really happy about that. And then I just allowed myself to actually take a nap because I had been so busy. Good for you. And it's hard when you have so much to do. You don't like mm-hmm. you feel guilty about resting. And yet resting is part of health. So I was like, yes, it is. forget that. So it was it was good. I had a good day yesterday. I can't complain. Oh, I'm yeah. glad. I'm and, glad to hear that. And now here I am with you talking about one of our favorite things, right, Anna? Oh, my God. I can't wait. <laughs> Orca. Um, now I want to give a shout out to my friend Poodle. So my friend Renee, Poodles and Natalie. Poodles just started listening to the show and he randomly texted me and I really appreciated his comment. He said, oh my gosh, just listen to part of your show on Spotify. It is extremely well put together. Good damn job. Amazing. Thank you, Poodles. Isn't that cool? Now, his real name is Jason. All right. So you guys be like, what kind of, who is this? But, (laughs) um, but they call him Poodles. And anyway, so thank you, Poodles, for that because that really brightened my spirits that day, you know, to think that someone appreciates what we're doing. And he's a very techie person. I look up to his intellect and I admire him for that. And so it means something to me. So thanks a lot. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. You know, friends, we always think we're funny. Yeah. <laughs> we're the funniest people in the world. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And so it's nice to know that it's validated. Yes. So thank you, Poodle. Absolutely. Absolutely. We appreciate it. And today's episode, obviously, is about orgasms. I want to thank Christina. She is a friend and listener, and she has these questions for us. The first question she asked, are there people who can't have orgasms and how can their partner work to help them? Mm. The first thing I want to address is why that person is unable to have an orgasm and are they able to have orgasms when they masturbate? If so, it may be a psychological component that is missing during sex with their partner. Mm -hmm. And the first thing I would recommend is to teach and show your partner partner what makes you feel good it may be a scary thing to ask for from your partner because you don't want them to feel like they are less than but doing the explaining and teaching will be a form of connection and could elevate your relationship and patricia i know you're going to get into the psychological parts of orgasms which i'm excited to hear and with men orgasms aren't always about ejaculation and same thing with women Some women will squirt when they climax, Mm -hmm. and some women won't. It isn't anything shameful or embarrassing because the human anatomy is a complex system. Yes. And we have to navigate it differently. And we're all so individual. My goodness, Mm -hmm. not everybody. Listen, even Mm -hmm. something that you eat, you and I can have a yogurt. It's going to taste different to the two of us because of how our taste buds have been conditioned. So you can't expect, because I always had that question like, oh my gosh, before I die on my bucket (laughs) list, I want a square. You know what I mean? And, (laughs) And it's like, what's, you know, you ask yourself that question, what is wrong with me that I can't do that? And I feel that the other thing is exposure to other lifestyles, like people who watch porn and you see these girls squirting like it's a hose. 
I don't know right. how realistic you are comparing yourself to someone who may do that for a lifestyle or may have, mm-hmm. like you said, just their anatomy is different. So don't compare yourself. But mm-hmm. if you desire to do something, try to figure out how your body can work to achieve that desire. Speaking of what you said about porn stars squirting, I went to school <laughs> with a girl who ended up being a porn star. Wow. And when we went to school, she was kind of like this really shy person, but I liked her. We got along and we were just class mates we didn't hang out outside of school or anything Mm -hmm. and when i heard about this i was like oh hell yeah she's a porn star Mm -hmm. and that's how she got famous was because of the squirting then she ended up becoming a producer so she is in california making her millions of dollars people who are judging her about that I'm like, what about you? You can't compare. You know what I mean? Right. No, no doubt. Of course, I've watched her porn because I'm nosy and I'm just like, let's see what this, (laughs) I want to see what this is all about. Because I'm nosy and I might want to use it. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) But you're right though. Some people like it doggy style, standing up, laying down, sideways, upside down, 69, whatever. If all else fails and you still can't orgasm, there is something that's called the G-shot and it costs about $1,000 to $2,000. It's hyaluronic acid, which is injected into the G-spot. I mean, it's kind of like a lip plumper, but for your G-spot, it plumps up the oh, tissue. Oh, so it heightens its sensitivity? It does. Yummy. It is temporary, so you have to do it once a year. Wow. The thing is, there are so many things out there that you could do as a partner, like, hey, let's talk about what you like, what you enjoy, and at the end of the road, if those don't work out, do the G-shot. Wow. I have never heard that, Anna. That's amazing. And they have the uh, vaginal rejuvenation, where mm-hmm. they Tighten up all of the muscles in there. Sometimes when you have a baby, things spread. If all else fails, get the G-Shot. See if that works. Talk to your partner. Do different positions. Karma Sutra, all of that. Yeah. I think the tightening of the walls is a really, you know, it's invasive, obviously. So I have a friend who decided that once she was going to have her hysterectomy, she was going to just take care of everything at the same time and have her vaginal walls tightened, Mm -hmm. okay? Now, her and her partner don't communicate that well because she's, you know, she's got someone who's a little bit on the shy side and she's more like me that she's a little bit more open. So she had her hysterectomy, she had her walls tightened and she wanted to know if her partner was going to enjoy it. Finally, when she had, Mm -hmm. they're, they're having sex and they're engaging and she's sitting on top, Uh And she asks him, she's like, do you like it? Does it feel nice and tight? And of course, he didn't answer her. And she's still, you know, she's kind of riding him. And then she's like, do you like it? Does it feel nice and tight? Because part of the reason she got her freaking... Men, I don't think you appreciate what we do for you sometimes. That that what she did of getting her vaginal walls tightened was for her to have pleasure, but for to give him pleasure too. So she wanted to know what he thought. And then finally, the second time he didn't answer, she got annoyed. And so here they are having sex. They're being all intimate. She's like, do you like it? Does it feel nice and tight? (laughs) And obviously, he was like, yes, yes, it does. (laughs) He's like afraid. He's like, oh, my God, she's going to kill me if I don't answer the question. (laughs) So anyway, guys, let your women know that they feel nice and tight, damn it. It's really a compliment, just like we like you know, we let you guys know how we like it. We like to hear that too. So <laughs> I don't know who your friend is, but I imagine a woman be like, do you like it? <laughs> yeah, yeah. All of a sudden you're going to grab him by the hair and like the chest hair and slap him around. Um, it's like, go oh, shoot. But anyway, but those those are definitely, I, and that's great to know that this injection that you can get mm. is not as invasive, obviously, as other things that you can do. That's good information for sure. And the second question is, what's the difference between a clitoral and internal orgasm? And we have to start by explaining the basic anatomy. Genital organs are formed from the embryonic tissue, which forms either the clitoris or the penis. And the difference is the sex chromosome. Last time, Patricia, on the boners episode, you mentioned that the clitoris has over 8,000 nerve endings, which is double the amount in a penis. Mm -hmm. And um, the university, I'm going to butcher this, I'm so sorry. It's in France, but University de Rennes. De Rennes. 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 Yes, you go. <laughs> university de Rennes. <laughs> uh, yes. 
they had a great academic journal about orgasms that was written in 2019. And they said that the internal vaginal area has the same amount of nerves as the clitoris. Mm. But imagine how sensitive the clitoris is. Yes. And when you watch porn and you see the guy rubbing on it and being so aggressive with the clitoris, that is painful. Oh my gosh, guys don't even understand. It's not gum. You don't chew it. Remember I said that line? You don't (laughs) chew it. You, yeah, that has to be touched a certain way, you know, as opposed Mm -hmm. to like poked with the point of your finger, whereas you rest the meaty part of your finger and massage. yes you know what it's no different than your than your testicles right but i mm-hmm. don't think they see it in the same light because it's just this thing and it's this mysterious button that they try to find sometimes it's like a doorbell that mm-hmm. you can't find but it opens <laughs> it opens so many doors <laughs> <laughs> that's true <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, uh-huh. Back door, front door, whatever kind of door you want. Yes. But you have to know how to ring the bell. You do. To get access to the inside. Yes. The cool thing about orgasms is it's still being continuously studied. And we don't have a definitive reason why orgasms are here except for the simple process of pleasure. Mm-hmm. And researchers showed, well, maybe let's ha- hypothesize. Maybe it's because the orgasmic spasms cause contractions and improves sperm retention, which increases the chance of fertilization. And other studies show that it's not the case because women don't have to orgasm to have an egg fertilized. Exactly. And sometimes men, they might not come, but they might have a little bit of semen in there and they might not come, but that could also mm-hmm. fertilize an mm-hmm. egg. Right. There is, I love her. Her name is Mary Roach. So I've read two books of Mary Roach's writings. And the first one is called Stiff, which talks about cadavers. And for all you listeners out there, I like death. Not saying I'm like this emo person, nothing like that. But I like talking about death, the spirit, Mm -hmm. cadavers. That's true. For fun, I will look at autopsies dissections of lungs being that yes you know i like yes. that we kind of i kind of like that too oh you do good okay i want to say that the reason that i'm attracted to it is because mm-hmm. it keeps me humble with my own mortality and oh. all the complexities i don't think we appreciate what it takes to be in sync with your body you know what your body has to do to regulate all the things that you need. Again, going back to that previous comment, no one is the same, even identical twins. And so mm-hmm. they may mm-hmm. share a lot of components that are similar, but they are not 100% the same. And so with the way where they may think, because nature, nurture, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so the point is that I'm attracted to it because it just kind of grounds me all the time with this thing I call my body and this thing that I have as a consciousness and how I have to separate the two. But anyway, so yeah. tell me uh, what, what Roach said. Sorry. Um, the other book that she wrote is called Bonk, and that talks about sex physiology. Oh, okay. She isn't a scientist, but because she's been a journalist and she's you know been a columnist, she's able to do a lot of research with her background. Orgasms are a reflex of the autonomic nervous system, which are things that we don't have control over, yes. like digestive, cardiovascular, and arousal. So... We don't need genitals to have orgasms. Mm. Sex researcher Alfred Kinsey interviewed someone that could climax simply by having her eyebrows stroked. Wow. Right? People with spinal cord injuries will develop a sensitive area right above the injury. For example, like mm-hmm. their waistline, or sometimes people could even have their leg amputated and they could have arousals on their knee. Mm. There was a case of a woman that had an orgasm every time she brushed her teeth. Wow. (laughs) Lucky bitch. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) I'm just kidding. No, I don't know that I would want that every day. Lord, be too much. (laughs) Like, oh no, another one, please. Your teeth are so bright and sparkly. (laughs) I brush it every morning, noon, and night. (laughs) I really keep up on my dental hygiene. (laughs) You know what the sad thing about this, though? 
This lady thought that it was a possession of demons, and so she switched to mouthwash. Aww. She doesn't brush her teeth anymore. That's terrible. I know. That is, I, I, I'm laughing, but that is really sad to have that state of I mind. I know. Yeah. Um, and then in 1953, Rutgers University surveyed about 3,000 women, mm -hmm. and they found that 2% of women could orgasm by fantasy alone. Well, I remember listening to some kind of uh, research that they were doing with the mind uh -huh. and this woman there, there was a group and i want to say that it was columbia university and this woman could orgasm and climax just within i don't know like maybe 15 minutes or something by thought alone yeah so to me and i've said this many times your biggest sexual organ is your mind it starts in your mind like when you're thinking about let's say you have a date night and you're thinking about someone mm -hmm. you know you're gonna think about what you're gonna wear and you're gonna shave your legs and you're gonna put on yeah. this lotion and how is it gonna go and that's where that eroticism starts it's in the mind and thinking about it can you imagine by the time you reach that date that you've been getting ready for how your body has been reacting to this mental stimuli all mm -hmm. the whole time you're slipping and sliding all over the place you know what i mean slipping off chairs <laughs> so at anyway. the restaurant <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, stop. no kidding and you know what a great slippery world it is slippery way way at the university of utah i took a human sexuality class where we watched a man masturbate in a laboratory with scientists around him and it was hilarious because they had these connections on his brain, on his body, and they tested his sweat, yeah. dopamine levels, heart rate, blood flow, girth, all of that stuff. And wow. dopamine is the chemical that's released in your brain when it's like the rewards, you know? Oh, absolutely. Like sugar or drugs. Mm -hmm. It's like the same thing. Your body releases that when you're having sex. It's like, boo. Now, let me read this because this goes along the lines of what you just said. It says the period after orgasm known as the refractory period is typically a relaxing experience attributed to the release of the neurohormones oxytocin and prolactin as well as endorphins or endogenous morphine. This to me is very interesting because every time I read something about mm -hmm. orgasm, it never included mostly the vagina. Mm -hmm. It always uh, talked about the clitoris. So it says human orgasms usually result from physical sexual stimulation of the penis mm -hmm. in males, typically accompanying, like you said, typically accompanying ejaculation mm -hmm. and of the clitoris in females. Sexual stimulation can be by self-practice, which of course is called masturbation, mm -hmm. or with a sex partner, penetrative sex, non-penetrative sex, or non-sexual activity. But never do you see how it doesn't even address the vagina. Yeah. Because, and I was telling someone that women were designed to be pleasured mm -hmm. because for evolutionary purposes, mm -hmm. a woman does not have to have an orgasm to be impregnated, right? Yep. Yet a man does mm -hmm. have to have an orgasm to spread his seed or to be able to impregnate a woman. Mm -hmm. And the clitoris was designed simply for pleasure. So please take note of that, people. Yes. And, you know, I'm glad that you talked about the prolactin because if you have a lack of prolactin, that could stop ovulation and that could essentially stop menstrual cycles. Mm. Everything yes. really is attached to procreation. Yes. Everything we do almost, it's for an evolutionary purpose, mm -hmm. whether it's greatly significant or somewhat significant, but it really always ties into that, the way you're attracted to people, the yeah. way pheromones, the way we eat, how we rest, all is for that purpose of evolution and longevity. And with the purpose of longevity too, the reason why men masturbate more than women isn't just because they're pervs. I mean, maybe. Uh -huh. <laughs> But it's because fresh sperm are faster and stronger and they're able to swim towards mm -hmm. the egg better than a sperm yes. that's over a week old. Yes, yes. That's why guys keep masturbating, do your thing. Listen, don't let that get all fermented no. in there and be all, we don't want cheese, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Women who think that like, oh, my man is masturbating, it's a type of cheating 
No. You know, that's so crazy that I heard that. And I was like, I don't even get that way of thinking. It doesn't even make sense. That to doesn't me. make sense at all. And for those people who admit that they have a rich sexual relationship with themselves, mm-hmm. not only mentally or physically, masturbation is a huge release. I think it's important. I think that most animals do mm-hmm. it. Animals masturbate. Okay, so yes. it's not a bad thing. And it's sad that we have been taught in this society. Now, is there a time and place? I have told my children this. I said, we all defecate, right? We all go to the bathroom. Do we do it in public? No. You don't just squat yeah. outside when you want to go to the bathroom or whatever. There are things that even though we all do, there are moments in which we do it and some of them can be private. And so therefore, I feel the same way about masturbation. I think it's healthy. And I think that if you don't even know your own body, how can you guide your partner to satisfy you or help you become satisfied? Because I remember my mother not telling me you're a modern woman and your orgasm is your own responsibility (laughs) this is what she told me wow (laughs) thanks for the sex talk but anyway the point is though (laughs) that um yes it's true even though i'm responsible for that of course when you're engaging with a partner i feel like it's important for them to know what helps you climax because when you're engaging whether it's sex or whether it's love or whether it's in a relationship or whatever when we meet people We're like, hey, come over to eat. And you want to feed them. You want them to enjoy the meal that you're making. You want them because making other people happy makes you happy. It's the same thing in bed. When you make your partner happy, it makes you happy that you're making them happy. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I don't mean to take a dark turn about orgasms, but I want to mention this. (laughs) I'm sorry. I love that you preface it (laughs) so delicately and diplomatically. (laughs) Thank you. Go ahead. Proceed. I want to mention that when a person is raped, they can have an orgasm. And it's not them accepting the sexual encounter. What happens is Mm -hmm. it's a separate thing. It's involuntary. Women, if they do have an orgasm with rape, they might talk themselves through it and say, well, I had an orgasm. That means I accepted it. I just want to say no. Anna, thank you for Mm -hmm. that. Because you know what? I saw that show on Oprah. And uh, just to continue on that, because I really, really believe that this is so important. Many people have had experiences for many different reasons. And on that Oprah show, they talked about children that, you know, people that were molested as children, not just rape, but being molested. And children that felt so terrible because they were enjoying the feeling. And yet they were almost having this conflict, internal conflict, because in one hand, like you said, purely physically, it feels a certain way, but psychologically it's feeling so wrong. And then you are at this internal conflict and you don't know how to handle that Mm -hmm. in your mind. And therefore, obviously you don't see sex in a healthy way moving forward as you, when you become an adult, never blame yourself And never think that you were saying that you are giving this person permission and that that was okay. No, it just means that your body reacted to a physical thing. And that's all. And in your mind, you have to make that right through therapy and through other measures to get your mind right. But yeah, thank you for sharing that. That's that's crucial. Oh, yeah, you're welcome. And thank you for saying that because when you grow up, you can change your mindset where sex can be pleasurable again, even if you were molested as a child. When you grow up, sex isn't going to be about damaging or having that PTSD. There are ways to find happiness through that. Mm -hmm. Speaking of happiness, let's go to the next question. Okay. Um, (laughs) I know. I'm sorry. I felt like I needed to say that. So thanks for letting me say that. No, I appreciate it. And I hope that anyone listening gets Mm -hmm. that. You know what I mean? Like that they understand and and that we really do mean well in, in making that comment that just like many people have recovered from many tragedies that we've all experienced in our own lives. Hopefully that's one because sex is meant for pleasure. And it's sad that someone would use such a wonderful, Mm -hmm. great tool against someone. Don't continue to be a victim of that experience by not allowing yourself to free yourself and and forgive yourself. Thank you. For that. So yeah. Christina's third question, which you did research on is, 
Do orgasms make people feel more connected, or is it an exchange? I feel like that was a two-part question, and I don't know that they're intertwined. There's a lot of different relationship modes out there, right, Anna? There's、mm-hmm. f buddies, and then there's people who are in kind of long-term relationships but don't have the same dwelling, right? They don't live in the same place, but they consider themselves committed. There's so many different things out there, so. As far as connection, I think it can, given the fact that we release these chemicals after we orgasm. You can have pillow talk afterwards. You can hang out, even friends with benefits. I think it's very seldom that you do not develop some kind of connection with someone that you're engaging yourself with and allowing access to your body. Well, our bodies are so important to us, and eventually, the more that you engage with someone,、mm-hmm. I think it's inevitable to have some kind of connection. So, I would say that in general, yes, orgasms do make people feel more connected. You've just shared a euphoric、mm-hmm. experience, right? Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, you both shared it, and it was just one, which I think we can all. Say that we've had that experience, right? <laughs> we we walked away thinking, "Did you enjoy that?" Because obviously I didn't. But、uh, anyway,、um, but if you both are on the same page and you've both helped each other and you had good communication in wherever you're doing it, it doesn't always have to be in the bedroom. That when you walked away from that release, you feel a little bit more connected to that person, and it's not just like,、uh, okay, well, bye, see you, you know what、bye. I mean, see you later till the next time. I think it's inevitable. Now, Esther Perel, this woman is amazing. People, if you haven't seen her or heard, she's a therapist and she works for big corporations also to help people understand. So it's not just the physical, but it's the psychological side of it. But she says that love is to have. And desire is to want. Ooh, I like that. Don't you like that? Because a lot of times you may just want someone, and once you get、mm-hmm. what you want, you don't necessarily. And if you can't get what you want, you desire it more. Yeah. But sometimes when you're intertwining love. You want to have that experience over and over, and I think that that's why sharing a space of vulnerability and being、mm-hmm. naked and connecting and having orgasm and being able to openly talk、mm-hmm. about it brings that desire. And at some point, desire can lead to love because you want more of it, and then you want to have it. Does that make sense? That makes sense. I was wondering. Last episode, you said that you sleep in the nude. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for bringing that up, Anna. <laughs> I thought you forget about that. Okay, go ahead. Okay, so do you know who Dr. Ruth is? Dr. Ruth, of course、oh, I do. I Are you kidding、Dr. me?、Ruth. My husband tells me that I'm Dr. Ruth sometimes. Really? Like, well, that's a compliment. I know, but I'm like, you know, yes, she is the pioneer. This woman was the pioneer. I remember when I was younger, I'd watch her on TV, and she would just have dildos on her table, <laughs> how to insert it, how to use the vibrators. But there was a quote that she said. It reminded me of you. But she says, "Nobody has any business being naked in bed if they haven't decided to have sex." And I thought about you. I'm like, well, that means. Patricia is having her sexy time. Wow, her sexy time all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not true. But I'm always willing and available. How's that? <laughs> that is a great clarification. <laughs> that is the point. I'm wanting to always be willing and available. Doesn't mean I always get what I want. Let me tell you, I love what I love about Dr. Ruth too. Is she was such a non-intimidating person because of her, you know, size and, and yeah, and and her、yeah. accent. And I think that that's why it was palatable for a lot of people to listen to sex advice from her versus someone who looked like Cindy Crawford or、mm-hmm. someone that was like, I don't want my husband looking at her. Right? Women were probably <laughs> threatened, or you know, I think that that's one of the reasons why, amazingly enough, her appearance. Helped her get the word out because people、yeah. were able to just not think of her in a sexual way for the most part. Yes. And if you were into Dr. Ruth, that's okay. Listen, it takes all kinds. Okay. Now the other question you asked me, and I was like, well, I don't really know because I ain't on no dating、mm-hmm. apps or anything, but I do have a lot of single friends.、Mm-hmm. Do dating apps help fill that need, or are people using hands or toys more? Again, I feel like that's a two-part question because. 
I think that today in our society with all of these, uh, you know, social media platforms and constant, the constant need for stimulation, whether it's visual and with these algorithms, right? I mean, we know that we are to a degree, our attention is constantly being captivated and being fought for by mm-hmm. wh- whatever platform you're using. So the dating apps fulfill a need briefly. Mm-hmm. Because it can also set you up for immediate disappointment as well. So there's another guy that I like to listen to, Matthew Hussey. He's just this guy who's trying to get women, um, understand women and give women insight on dating and things like that. And he said something really interesting. He said, you know, the minute you go on a date and you walk that person to the car, or you part ways you turn around and you're bombarded with 50 hits that you might have gotten from somewhere else. And immediately, whether you enjoyed that date or not, let's say you walked away feeling a void, those hits, those likes, those interests in you, boom, they fulfill a desire. You don't even give that date as much attention as you would have if these other platforms were not available to stimulate you and to distract you from it. So I don't know that it's any more fulfilling, but definitely at the end of the day, there are a lot more people that are having problems finding a match. I don't like to say the one. And I think Anna, you and I have discussed this before. That's not a real thing. The one. Are you crazy in this planet of billions of people? You think that there is the one for you? There are many ones depending Mm -hmm. on where you are in your life, what stage you're at, and all of those factors and your experiences. So the one that was the one 10 years ago may not be the one anymore. Agree. And there's nothing wrong with that because that's another thing we come from a history of You could have hated your job, but you were there for 40 years, or you could have not been in a happy marriage, but you can say that you punched in for 50 years. And that's supposed to be a medal that you wear, that you weren't happy for all Mm. that time. So along those lines, the one, no, but you can have someone in your life that's fulfilling. And that seems to be a hard thing to do and find these days, given our distractions. So answering the second part of that question, at the end of the day, people are using more toys. Do you remember when COVID hit? What do you think was one of the top sellers on Amazon? Do you remember that? I don't remember. Were they sex toys? It was dildo. Yes, it was sex toys. Oh, wow. People okay. were like, ah, it's on lockdown. I need <laughs> to take care of some things. This six feet distance is not working for me. <laughs> That's right. And you have to wear a mask? No. Yeah. Oh, forget about it. No, I was going to take care of me. And so it really uh, skyrocketed, which I thought was hilarious because I thought it was very telling where in society, no one wants to shed light on the fact that we all need and want sex and yeah, connection. Exactly. And it doesn't. it's not always synonymous, but... Yes, sex is important. And so I think people are using toys, whether you use your hands to mm-hmm. give your practice. And <laughs> so you, and if you use toys or so you don't get carpal tunnel, but people are definitely self pleasuring more and we're becoming more comfortable with the thought of that being okay. Now, anything can turn into an addiction. You can over exercise mm-hmm. having a healthy, that's why I said before, again, a healthy relationship with your own sexuality is important and masturbation I really feel is one of them if we let people be honest we would say that that is true I agree once you can take care of yourself then spread the love yes however you want to do that (laughs) don't spread your legs too much but I'm just kidding no you know what and when you're happy Mm -hmm. right I don't think I've ever walked away from a session with myself being like (laughs) I hate the world. I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm so happy I had some alone time. I'm going to go and do the laundry. You know, you're just a little bit happier. There's a little bit of more pep in your step. And that comes with eating well, exercising, hydrating, sleeping well, mental meditation and stability, whether you practice uh, faith or not and do your well in your faith. And then also all of that, that is part of that package. Absolutely. A hundred percent agree. All right. I'm happy that we're on the same page there, Anna. All right. Well, if you would like to be part of our show, we would love to hear from you. Ask us questions and share your story. We'll give you our unfiltered, unforgiving, unqualified advice. 
Record an audio clip too on your phone and send it into that's why show at gmail.com. So remember, you can find us on Instagram and Facebook at that's why show. Our episodes are on Podbean, Apple, Google, Spotify, and all the other platforms out there. So please follow, subscribe, and write us a review. We always love that. Thank you. Our quote of the day is Patricia's, you follow this girl, right, on Instagram? I follow this girl and I love her posts because they're very sensual and sexual and done very tastefully. And so I really appreciate her. And her Instagram is called not just underscore a underscore girl. And her quote is, communication is key for a good relationship. It's not just about licking each other's private parts. (laughs) That's right. (laughs) So no, that it's just if you have a sexy or a healthy sexual relationship. Yes. (laughs) Yes. It's not just about that. It's about talking with your mouth as well. (laughs) Anyway, and with that, peace, love, and dark chocolate. Thanks for listening, guys. Thank you. Bye. Bye.